G'day guys, if you're watching this you probably already know what one of these things are. It's a three-way telescopic riser from Jayco. It's using all the uh, pop-up campers. Mine's a Jayco Swan 2016 model. Uh, in my previous video you may have seen um, where I replaced one of these things. I talked about pulling one apart just so we can have a look inside it. Um, this is that video, so let's get started. Okay, this is a uh, brand new three-stage lifter, riser, whatever you want to call them, um, that I bought from Brisbane Camperland. It was about a hundred bucks. Um, so I'm just going to try and get it apart and uh, have a look inside. I'm just going to push on this is the end that normally attaches to your roof, and this ends normally in the body of the van. Just push, it's pretty easy center section has come out you can see. so we've got the body this is the lower section and this is the top piece that you normally see sticking out the top of the van and it's just that plastic slide there so we'll just lay that down there for now now we've got these two and we'll just push the top piece inside and it just pops out pull that through Now this is the next section down, this is obviously the slide and the stopper that runs inside this section, the body section. And then at the top there is just the guide which the, the top centre section will run through. And this is the top piece, again there's where your bolt goes through that holds onto your roof. And this one here is the bottom piece of that and you can see there's there's actually a little concave little section in the middle there where the top of your spring would locate into. And this is the bit that actually the spring pushes on to actually lift your roof. All right. Okay guys, so I've built myself a little mock-up of how the riser sits in the camper. So this would sort of duplicate where the top of your van sits, where the body of the van is. And you normally only see about this much of the riser sticking up. And this is where the bolt goes through that attaches to your roof. So now, normally when you start winding the roof, the pusher spring runs up the center of the riser, which we talked about in the other video. So now we've got one apart, we can see, well, the pusher spring sits inside and pushes on this section, which is just, the little section is at the top in the middle so as you start winding this section starts to come up and then as you get to a certain point the second section will start to rise now this section if this section is too low you'll find that your roof um, is quite sloppy there's a lot of movement so you really need this section to come up as high as it can go it will give you the maximum stability so you have to be careful not to pull it up too far. Um, if it doesn't come up by itself, um, a couple of ways to do it. The best way is to stop the roof um, just a bit more than halfway and you can actually just slide this piece up by hand and then continue to wind the roof up. So it should move pretty easy. It should slide as easy as this, just almost one-handed. So you need to make sure that your camp is level before you start winding. Any twist or extra weight on one side of the roof, it will pull these and make this piece a lot stiffer and a lot more difficult to push up. So if you get your roof all the way up and you've forgotten to do that and you need to get this piece to go up higher again, I found one of the easiest and safest methods is actually to put your elbows on the side of the van grab it and actually use your wrists to push that section up. So you don't want to be doing a big jerky movement. That's the movement that will pull this piece out of the bottom. And I'll show you what happens in a second when you do that. But just use your elbows on the side of the van and then you can push it up in a controlled manner so that you can get it up. Now, when you've worked out where it goes, what I do with mine is I actually put a little pen mark, um, a permanent marker pen. On here so I can see where it should be stopping and you can do the same at the bottom um, so I know exactly at what height 
this sits before it actually hits any of the plastic stoppers. Um, so I'm not risking overextending it. And okay, it. so now what we're going to do is I'm going to try and overextend it and get it to fail. Okay, well as you see, this I believe is one of the most common failures, whereas the top locator slide which sits in the top of the body here has totally come out of that top tube. The other thing which can happen, which happened to me, was this stopper slide which is on the bottom of the second section, it actually came off and it ended up going all the way down inside the tube inside the van. So those I believe are the two most common failures um, that they have happened and if that does happen you'll most likely end up with your spring sticking up out here and a whole bunch of grease and somebody screaming what's going on. Now if you end up and you haven't creased the spring so if the weight hasn't popped out and come down and landed on it and you haven't damaged the spring, the spring is still good. You can actually get these over the top and place it back in. It will go back in usually if there's no damage to the riser or the spring and it's just the plastic clip. You can insert it back in and continue your hold up. So, it's something to bear in mind emergency, but you will need to replace those. Once they come out, they are one use only. You, you shouldn't be reusing them on a permanent basis, but um, just the one use up, the one use down, you'll actually will stay in place. You just be very, very careful. Now, the other thing that if your spring is really, really high, and so if you end up that piece is out and your spring is really high and you can't get the riser back in over the spring, you may need to unbolt it from the roof. Now obviously you've got to have to support the roof, so the best way is with some pieces of wood. Um, your little safety support poles aren't the best thing where they sit up in the roof. Uh, it's actually a curved area. They're not really designed to support the way the roof, they're a safety item. So if you can get um, some wood, some timber, uh, or some other piece of metal or something that's really strong that can actually support the weight, um, that's going to be a much better way and just make sure it's 100% safe before you go unbolting anything. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do have uh, a failure out in the field. Um, as I say, your spring does need to not be all bent. If it's all bent and creased then you're going to struggle to get in there. You may find it all binds up. Um, what happened to me was exactly that piece came off. My spring was fine. I was able to sit this piece back in and continue my holiday. I uh, got it back home, then I had to extract that piece from the bottom, uh, which had fallen down in the bottom. Um, so then I could go about repairing it, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay, so if you've been unlucky enough to have one of these come apart on you, then you find that you need to replace one of these or any of the other plastic components. You can actually buy them as spare parts from JTAC. So what we're looking at here is this slide, this metal slide, and this is the stopper piece, the bit that goes in the main section that's in your body, this piece goes in here. Then you have, okay, order. This is a piece that goes in the next section and then in the very top section where your pusher spring goes into you can buy that piece and then there's a piece at the top in the cap. So all those bits are available. When this happened to mine, as I say, I replaced these. I didn't remove this section from the camper. I simply used a coat hanger and I fished the piece, this piece had fallen down inside. I fished that out and then I removed that piece so I bought a new piece I slid that on then I slid this piece on and I just inserted the whole thing with the new pieces 
back inside. Now obviously my spring was good, my riser was all good, everything was good. I just overextended and pulled that piece out. But I would recommend if it's come out to replace those pieces. If you do find yourself having to replace any of the plastic slides, there is something to keep in mind um, with regard to these tabs. So these are little tabs, which hopefully you can see here. Now, this is the original one from my 2016 Swan. And if I roll it over, you can see it's got a tab on that side and there's no other tabs on one side. Now, this is a replacement that I've bought. Now, it has the same tab, but if I roll it over, it actually has another one on the other side. So this is actually a much better design, in my opinion. Um, so just make sure when you order the parts, you check what you've got for your model, just to make sure that it is the correct one. Or if you can, just take the old parts into Jayco and they'll be able to steer you in the right direction, hopefully. So the other thing I can suggest is that before you pull your riser apart is to just mark the orientation of each section of the riser. Mostly because this top section where your bolt goes in, it is possible to insert this section at 90 degrees so you'll end up with your bolt hole going this way. Now on the bottom of the telescopic riser it has these holes so these are the only ones that can go into your van on either side. So if you get this top section around the wrong way, you may get it all in and then wonder why your bolt doesn't want to go through the hole. So just keep that in mind uh, before you pull it apart. Just mark it, that way you know it's going back together exactly the same way as you uh, pulled it apart. So the other thing I'd like to talk about is lubrication. Now I think lack of lubrication is, is possibly the cause of most failures, I think, if your risers are well lubricated, there's really not much reason for them to grab or snag or fail or do any of those other things. So I like to lubricate mine every time I use it, but it's important that you use the correct lubrication. It's um, suggested to use a dry lubricant. This is what I use, this is uh, WV40. Uh, it's, there's many other different brands out there, um, but it's important this is not your regular WD-40. This is the PTFE, which stands for polytetrafluoroethylene, which is essentially like what your non-stick pans are made of. So it's very slippery, but it doesn't attract dirt and dust and all those other things that you don't want getting stuck inside the risers. So this can I just keep in the van and um, use it in your door locks and all that sort of stuff and pretty much your bed slides and anywhere else that um, needs lubricating. I've found many, many uses for it. As I say, I just keep mine in the van and I use it every time that I'm out. So. Okay, so if you've replaced any of your plastic stoppers or your slides, now all that's left to do is put it back together. So hopefully you remember to mark the orientation of all your pieces so you knew which way, you know which way they, they came apart. So you can put them back together the same way. But if not, um, just make sure that your bolt hole for your roof faces the same direction as the bolt holes for the bottom of the, the riser, which bolts into your camper. That's most important. On mine, the bolt holes face the same direction as the, all the tabs as well. So it's as simple as that, let's put it back together. So I'm just going to take the top section and insert it up the guts of the next section. Now this bit, just got to jiggle it around just so we get it to hopefully line up with that end of the plastic. And I'll just push it through. To push back through with my finger or try not to use a screwdriver or anything sharp to be pushing up inside there if you've got to push it push it with something soft that's not going to damage the plastic but then now you've got the top piece together now we just confirm that our pen marks are okay and we'll insert Same again, just 
a little bit fiddly to line up. Now we have the back piece, the bottom the slide that's going to go in. Get that located. Push that in and come out. And there you go. Now, when you buy these, they normally come with a piece of wire that's through these holes. So this stops the sections coming apart. So you just have to remove that. Um, but if you put it back together ready for the install, if you watch the other video, um, I go through um, how I fitted one of these things. So as a game, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, this is just information that I wanted to know. Um, when I bought my camper, I couldn't find any videos on how anybody did anything on these with pairing them or do anything. So these are just my ideas. As I say, it uh, might be the wrong way to do things. I'm not sure. It's worked for me. You can make your own judgment. But hopefully it's given you a little bit of information into just how they work and how they go together. Um, and you can make a judgment as to whether or not you want to have a play with yours. Um, but Hopefully it's helped you out. Um, give me a thumbs up in the comments um, or tell me what I've done wrong. If there's something that uh, I've missed out or can be improved on, um, please let me know. And uh, other than that, stay safe and have a good time and we'll catch up with you later. Thanks guys.